Welcome back, everybody, to Banjo-Kazooie. Last episode was kind of boring, except for the fact that I'm like, we can't jump, this mic controller must be broken. Oh no, turns out you just need to learn how to jump well. Anyhow, welcome to the main hub world, Gruntilda's Lair. There's Grunty herself, like, hmm, <laughs> you've entered, have you? Anyhow, first thing you can do is, if you look around, well, we can't see it, but there's something up at the top of there. Let's jump up. It's a giant gold puzzle piece. This is going to be our main collectible of the game. Hey, it's me, Mr. Jiggy. Now go and find a picture with a piece missing. So Jiggies are our main collectible of the game. We'll need these in order to open the worlds of the game. There's a halfway up here, but we can't go. It's too steep, even though in real life you could absolutely walk up that no problem. But in video games, anything that's greater than a 20 degree incline apparently is made of pure ice that pushes you back. Anyhow, there's this other tunnel we can go through. This is the first world, Mumbo's Mountain! To open the door, you'll need to find the jigsaw picture with an image of this area on it. Have a look around. It can't be far away. You found a jigsaw picture. Stand on the jigsaw shaped podium and I'll explain what you have to do. So this is how we open the worlds of the game. To enter the world shown on the picture, you must fill in the missing spaces with the jigsaw pieces. We've got the first jigsaw piece, Goggle Boy. Great! To fill in the missing spaces on a picture, press A. If you don't want to use any jigsaw pieces, press B to leave. Grunty's plan is rather cunning. When I'm thin, guys will come running. Oh, thanks, Grunty. That had nothing to do with the explanation, though. Anyhow, if we put in that jigsaw piece. That's it! The picture is complete and the door to Mumbo's Mountain is open! That was such an easy fit! The others may just test your wit! <laughs> so that's how we're gonna open up the worlds in Grunty's Lair. All of the worlds are, exist in the lair, and you need to find the corresponding podium and fill them in. And each jigsaw piece can go into any of the pictures. It's not like, oh, if you want to open Mama's Mountain, only this specific jigsaw piece needs to be gotten. No, any jiggy works on any picture. Anyhow, let's enter the first world. Welcome to Mumbo's Mountain. There are three new moves to learn in this world. Find my molehills and I'll explain. So this is kind of just your typical starry world, it's grass themed. It's pretty darn small, but it's a fun world. Though there's a lot crammed into it. Anyhow, these are our first enemies here. They're easy enough to deal with. And who, who could this be? You saved me! Gruntilda has imprisoned five of us Jinjos on each world! Free us all to get a Jiggy! I'll remember that. Yeah, you definitely want to help the Jinjos. I'm a note one of a hundred on each world. Collect us to open the note doors. That's the other thing. So the other main collectible besides Jiggies are musical notes. There are a hundred on each level, and this is one of the few complaints people have about the game, which is, uh, you, you notice that there's a live system as well as there's a portal back here with Banjo and Kazooie's head on it. If you step on that, you leave the world. If you either leave the world or die in a world, your notes reset. You lose all of the notes, and you have to collect them all again. However, your high score remains. So if you want to open the note doors, you need to get a good high score. So for example, if I collect 60 notes on the level and then leave, my high score for that level will be 60. So I'll have that 60 to use to open note doors. You want to get the high note high score on every level, getting all 100, if I, ideally. Now on the first few levels, the notes will be very easy to get. On the later levels, not so much. Now there's a blue Jinjo on that platform. We can just do the double jump and get him. There's some musical notes underwater. Let's grab those. 
Yeah, so I may use Kazooie's B swim to go far, and then I use Banjo's A kick in order to actually grab the notes. Just like that. This is a bowl. They are annoying because you can't actually kill them. You can knock them out briefly, but then they'll come back. Go away! Leave my honeycombs alone! So this is a honey hive. If, you, uh, if you're all on HP, you can destroy them to get free, uh, free honeycombs. Uh, however, uh, you'd have to be pretty cruel to kill that guy just to get the honeycombs. He's not doing anything to us. And we'll, we'll go there later. We'll go there in just a little bit. Let's go up here first. There are some more musical notes. These are termites. They are pretty easy to deal with. Yeah, it's kind of weird that their eyes come apart along with their body. And here's bottles. The towel on Trog will let Kazooie tackle steep slopes with ease. That sounds useful. How does she do it? Hold Z, then press the left C button. Continue to hold Z while moving Kazooie around with the control stick. Go practice! This is a very useful move, so if we crouch and then tap left C, we enter Talon drop mode so long as we keep holding Z. And not only can you go up slopes with this, it's also a faster way of moving. You must search for one or ten of us on each world. We'll help you progress through the witch's lair. Yep. Each world. Oh, wait. When you're ready to leave this world, return to the start area and stand on the exit pad. Yep. So each world in this game will have 10 jiggies, 100 notes, and then two hollow honeycomb pieces on it. Another thing that they'll have hidden is this little guy. Me, Mumble's token, used for mumble magic. Whatever that is. Where the ends, Kazooie can learn to use us as ammo. That's just a mild collectible. Anyhow, so if we're in Talon Trot mode, we can stand on this, but if we exit, it makes us slide down just like the slope and Grunty's lighter did. Talon Trot is very useful. And the orange G goes up there. And now we've got, this is a giant slope, and a bunch of little platforms over here. We can move with these and just collect these notes. Yippee! You've collected enough notes to break the first note door spell. Okay, that was slow text. Get used to it, yeah. I got half the notes on the level 50, which is enough to break the first door, but this is a very easy level to get 100 on, and you have to get almost all the notes in the game in order to beat it, and you need to get almost all the jiggies in the game to beat it as well. There's the yellow Jinjo! The Jinjos will not be this easy to get on every level, and what's nice is that they'll let you know you're near one, and they'll go like, they'll whistle for you and yell, HELP! So if you can't find one, but you can hear it, it means you're close. And we have 64 notes now. And hey, it's Donkey Kong. What's up, Donkey Kong? <laughs> this Kong is tree. Me hit bear with oranges. Don't touch Kong's blocks. So there are these three blocks lying around. If we stand on them and have Konga launch an orange at us, it'll hit the block, and if we get all three of his blocks... <laughs> Clever bear find Konga's gold! Thanks, Konga. You can also climb up the tree Konga's standing on. Hey, that's Konga's orange! Put it back! Um, oranges are nice. Okay, thanks, living orange. Now we got Diddy Kong over here, and he wants the orange. Oh, Chippy White Kong is orange. Chippy help fat bear and bird. I'm not 
not fat. So that makes this platform rise up and gives us another Jiggy. The worlds in this are very short. We can do a high jump up here, and we get another Bottles Mobile. I wonder what we're gonna learn today. Time for the buzzard to learn the ancient ways of the egg. I'm listening, Beetle Breath. Hold Z, then press the top C button to shoot an egg out of your mouth. Hey, sounds cool. Anything else? Sure. Press the bottom C button instead, and you can shoot them out from behind. Sheesh. Sounds painful. I wish I'd never asked. Bird Brain can carry 100 eggs in her backpack. Oh, and you can also use the control stick to aim while you're crouching. Egg is sighting, huh? Now that you've learned to use the eggs, here's 50 to practice with. Hmm, your energy's a little low. I'll fill it up for you. Yeah, that's nice. If you're low on energy, you can talk to Bottles. And maybe it's only when he teaches you a new move and not when you've already learned the move from him, but he'll refill your energy for you, which is nice. Another Mumbo token up here. And this is interesting. This is a switch with Grunty's face on it, but we can't do anything with that just yet. But remember that. We'll have to come back for it. <laughs> Me safe here! Bear can hit Conga! Well, that's where you'd be wrong. Uh, okay, well, if I wasn't so bad, you would be wrong. <laughs> Yar! Egg hurt Conga! boss, if you can count him as a boss. <laughs> bear beat Kanga. Me give prize to Bear. Kanga had three jiggies. Thanks, Kanga. Of course, as soon as we grab the G, he immediately reverts to throwing oranges at us. And that's so if you defeat him before getting all the blocks hit, you can still get that jiggy without leaving the world. Anyhow, we've actually explored almost all of the level. Again, the levels in this game are pretty small, but Mumbo's Mountain in particular is tiny. Oh, there's a building in here. What could be inside? Hey, ugly! No bears allowed in Tickers and Tower! So this is like a termite's nest here. Anyhow, this is a tower that's a little too steep for us, but we've got the tower on trot. And there's another mumbo token there. Unfortunately, the, uh, the platforms in here are so steep, even the tower on trot can't go up them. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Well, this is an interesting place, huh? We got a skull-shaped building with a jiggy in it. We got a totem pole there, and if you look in the t uh, for the second from the top, there's a little hollow honeycomb in there. Remember that. Anyhow, hey bottles. I call the being this the beak buster. Jump into the air, then press Z to send Kazooie slamming hard down on the floor. Oh, I don't like the sound of that banjo. Get used to it, Nest Girl! You'll be using it a lot! Whoa, Banjo! There's nothing more I can teach you on this world! Anyhow, this is a ground pound of sorts. We can use it to smash these shacks around here. First one has some nuts. Second one has some eggs. There's another mumbo token back there. That one has an enemy inside. And this one has the final Jinjo. And they drop a Jiggy for us. Thanks, Jinjos. One up in here. 
And the last one has a jiggy. Hello, man. Juju, Mumbo's totem pole. Feed us with nice blue stones. Uh, I got eggs. Do those count? I, I suppose. Sure. Now remember, there's the hollow honeycomb piece in the third one, so once there's only one left, you can high jump on here, and then high jump to get the hollow honeycomb piece. Like I said, the hollow honeycomb pieces are much better hidden in the actual world than they were on Spiral Mountain. Anyhow, you might be spinning faster, but you're still easy. Wonderful. Before we explore that skull building, let's tell on Trot over here. Not quite a mirror image of the other side, but close enough. And there's another Jiggy! First level's really fun and really easy, so don't really worry about it. Also, <laughs> at 64 in, draw distance can be a little bad. And, almost didn't get this, final mumbo token. And one last detour we're gonna make, remember the grunty switch that we saw? Well, now that we've got the Beak Buster, or Blaster, I forget what it is already. Now that we have the Ground Pound move, we can smash that switch. Stand at the edge of the platform, do a high jump, make sure you're moving the control stick during the high jump in order to control your momentum. Pretty simple. That almost was bad. Yeah, every single world in this game, other than Spiral Mountain, will have a witch switch. If we press it down, it'll make a jiggy appear near the entrance to the world. So that one is at the very top of that mountain, and as you can imagine, that slope is way too steep even for the Talon Trot. What can we do about that? do about that is visit the local shaman, Mumbo. It's his mountain. Let's go in and say hello. Also, his building has a jigsaw piece in its eye socket. Let's high jump for that. Really easy. Only one jiggy left, and it is at the top of that termite nest. We might need Mumbo's help. This is Mumbo. Me, Mumbo, best shaman in all game, can help Banjo and Filthy Feathered One. Watch it, hot boy! Mumbo's magic tokens hid by witch. Find tokens and Mumbo help you. Ah, Banjo has plenty tokens. Stand on skull and press B to see mighty Mumbo magic. Well, first I want to help myself to some of these notes that you have. Also, there are these lit torches here, and there's one unlit torch. You can high jump on top of the unlit torch and explore the rafters of his skull. There will be stuff hidden in the rafters of his skull on just about every level. Just eggs up here for the first level, but remember this for future ones. Anyhow, step on here and press B. It takes all five of our tokens. And we turn into a termite. Mumble's magic free to change back. You come back when ready. Termite bit small, but not bad for a first spell. Mumble practice needed. So, in several of the worlds, Mumble will be here, and he'll charge you Mumbo tokens, and he can transform you into different animals or different things. So, for the first level, our transformation is a termite, because, well, there are termites on this level. The termite can't attack? And can only jump once, but the jump is pretty good, and as you may imagine, may have guessed by process of elimination, termites can climb up extremely steep slopes. They also cannot take fall damage. Banjo and Kazooie is a game that definitely has fall damage, so you need to watch out for that. Anyhow, now that we're a termite, we can go into the termite's nest. And climb up uh, farther. <laughs> Also, fun fact, the music in this, uh, this Termite's Nest is a slowed-down version of what was originally going to be the Mumbo's Mountain music. 
before Grant Kirkhope changed it. Yeah, we have no problem being on these steep slopes when Banjo slid down normally. Due to the camera, these jumps can be a little tricky, so you might fall down a few times. Hey! Where did you get those shorts? I want them! You found all 100 notes on this world! Well done! Also, it's kind of weird that Termite wants your pants. You might want to go away from that. <laughs> yeah, so once you get 100 notes on the level, that's the best possible high score. So once we leave the world, we will have 100 notes that we can use to break note doors. So when you, when you I'll get more into it once we get to the note doors, but... The note door is basically, you need to, it'll check how many notes you have as a combined high score from all of the levels you've been to. Give me that cool backpack or else! He's a bully! Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not bowing to your communistic needs. I'm a free-loving American. Now we're at the top! Don't fall off, but there is a one-up you can grab there. And at the top here, we get the final G. So we've gotten all 100 notes, we've gotten all 10 jiggies, but there is still a hollow honeycomb piece that we do not have on this level. You might be wondering where that is. Well, it's, t it's difficult to find if you don't use first person a lot. However, if we use first person here, we might be able to see it. No. But now that we're a termite, we can walk even on the walls, and there is an inlet in the wall here above the river with the final hollow, honey hollow honeycomb piece. So we have 100% completed Mumbo's Mountain. We even got all the Mumbo tokens. There are only five on this level. There's a random amount on each level. Not really consistent for that. And I don't think I'll be getting all the Mumbo tokens because there are some I still don't even know how you get. Anyhow, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to leave the level as a termite. You actually can leave the worlds as the monster that you get turned into. Grunty's magic stops you from taking the notes off the world, but the 100 you just collected counts as your best note score. Try to get 100 on each world, as they are needed to open the note doors. Yeah, you need Jiggies to open the worlds, but you need notes in order to break the note doors for the various parts of the lair. Hey, where'd you get those shorts? Stop trying to take my pants. That's weird. Anyhow, there's the Jiggy that the Witch Switch created up here, and with the Termite, we can jump our way up to the top. Yeah, yeah! So there are nine main worlds in the game, and then there was the one Jiggy that we found at the very beginning of Grunty's Lair, which gives a total of ten Jiggies even for Grunty's Lair. Spiral Mountain has no Jiggies. Mumble magic get weak, animal turn back, or magic go. Yeah, so you can't take the animal anywhere you want, but you can at least leave the world for a little bit. Magic all gone, must go back to Baron Burn. Anyhow, I think that's going to do it for this uh, first... <laughs> I say first, it's technically episode 2 of Banjo-Kazooie, but this is the first real episode of Banjo-Kazooie. Thanks so much for watching, everybody! I'm Colorful Artie, tune in next time. Well, I'm going to try to do, like, one world per video, but that might not work all the time, because Grunty's Lair is pretty big, and sometimes there's going to be a lot of stuff to do in between worlds. So I'll play it by ear, but at least for the first few worlds, I'll be able to do one world per video, no problem. Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.